Winthrop, and I have the privilege of being Charlie Russell's mother. And I'm here at East Jesus a few days before what would have been his 50th birthday. I've come from Portland, Maine, where I live by the sea, and I am in awe. I was last here in October of 2011 when I brought Charlie's ashes back to East Jesus. I had them with me in Portland, Maine, and the ashes spoke to me and said, Take me back to the desert. Take me back to the desert. So that is what I did. Charlie was an amazing child. He was a perfect baby. He was a perfect baby. And he loved being a baby. He loved it. And when he got to be a toddler, he would go around proudly telling everybody he was an ex-baby. He was an ex-baby. Well, by the age of two and a half, he'd memorized the entire first chapter of Winnie the Pooh. And things like that kept happening, and I'm thinking, wow, this is incredible. I mean, this child is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, he was not athletic or physically active, but he, boy, he would love books even before he could read. And he was very easy, a very easy child. From day one, almost, um, he decided he just didn't want to do things the way average ordinary people did them because he found that sort of boring and uncreative. And one of the things that he did when he was five, he had taken piano lessons um, for a year in public school, or maybe he was six. And it came time for his piano recital along with all the other kids who had taken Suzuki piano at their elementary school in our neighborhood. And so he put on his little suit and he sat on the piano bench and he played, I don't know, Mississippi Hot Dog or something. And everybody clapped and at the end it wasn't enough that he just played the piano. He fell off the piano bench on purpose. I mean a prank. You know, it's like this is too boring. I've got to juice this up. So I thought early on, oh my god. But he stayed in Germany for seven years, became totally bilingual to the point where he even was dreaming in German, writing his journals in German, and half of them anyway, half in English, half in German. And he stayed there, and then he came back because of a girlfriend, in part, to New York City. It was, he had many dark nights of the soul, and he struggled, 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 struggled came out to California the first time, hated it, went back, drove this, I think, back and forth. And then he connected somehow with Oakland. Is he had heard that there were, you know, artistic colonies and art car stuff in Arizona and he went down to explore and it was too expensive and he was out of money. He had no money. And on the way back, or somehow there, he'd heard about Slap City and he said the price was right. I had no money, and I would not have to pay any money, no taxes, no rent, no mortgage, no nothing. So he came to explore. I think he found Leonard Knight and um, Salvation Mountain. So he started out working with Leonard a bit, and then he explored the area, and he said, you know what, I'm going to get, I'm going to get me my own place. And he came here, and he liked, he, he got just exactly, he worked it out, so the exposure of east and west, the fact that there's the, the um, cluster of trees, he wanted, you know, he just liked 
the kind of this area. And he had a vision, clearly, that it was to be an expandable, livable um, community for art. And I think he knew, as I watched this video this afternoon, that he was not probably going to live long and that he was going to live here. This is a lot of brown sugar and some seasonings like oregano. Of course it's juicing. We're going to light the barbecue with a impossibly complicated contraption. The odds of this actually working are, are pretty low, <laughs> actually. And Charlie, it would be so proud. And I think as amazed as I am at what has happened in so few years. So I am, it's so interesting. My father was known in the greater Boston area as the champion martini maker. <laughs> and his grandson, named after him, they were both Charles Stephen, became champion, I gather, of the chocolate martini. So here's to Charlie. Here's to Charlie. Charlie. 50 years old and still, still going on. <laughs> Thank you all for helping to continue to embody his dream. Wow. Amen. Okay. Yes. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My first ever. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> like we, now, like we always say about this time, thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Now we, we have a slight kind of ah man, and, um, and Aaron has been kind enough to work on this with me because um, Leonard Cohen's Alleluia has, along with a lot of things following Charlie's death, has just kept cropping up at amazing moments. So I thought, I asked if we could end this, and he's going to do the first verse, and then we can all sing the chorus. I heard there was a secret chord that David played in a